What is up, fanboys and family girls? This is Eric Fanboy with a special Fanboy uh, with an opinion episode. I just want to do a quick little video because I just watched the very first episode of Stargirl. And I also wanted to talk about the surprising news that happened a, about an hour or two before the premiere of Stargirl, which is that Ruby Rose is leaving Batgirl. Uh, excuse me, Batwoman. I was initially shocked when I heard the news, uh, especially since there was no indication beforehand that she was going to leave the show, or no rumors that she was going to leave the show. So, the, I, th I don't know what's more surprising, the fact that she's leaving Batwoman, or CW has said that they're going to recast the character, which is fucking crazy to me. Um... There hasn't really been any rumored or official word of why she's leaving, but she did say that she got hurt in filming the beginning of the season, and she had to go for like multiple surgeries for her uh, her needed discs. Or I am just butchering that word, but uh, that procedure. Uh, herniated discs she had to do two surgeries for that and she hurt herself bad so there are rumors that that may be why she's leaving the show uh, also the fact that she's just not very good on it she's okay she's a model not really much of an actress and it kind of shows at times um, uh, I heard someone say that maybe they were gonna use the character on the show who's Alfred uh, Pennyworth's daughter as the new Batwoman, but I don't know. I think it was just something happened. She doesn't want to be on the show anymore, and they're going to recast her, which, which I'm really shocked at because most most shows won't do that. They'll just retool and have somebody else play the character, another another character, or another actress who's already on the show. But it's big news her leaving, and it's been like a few days after the season finale. All right, so the, the other big news is the season premiere of Stargirl, which I really enjoyed. Uh, I will say that um, I do really like the character in the comics. And uh, originally this was supposed to be a production for the DC app, and then they moved it over to the CW. So because of that, it doesn't really feel like a CW show. And what I mean by that is um, it wasn't lame. It didn't have lame writing. It didn't have a lame storytelling. I felt like it was pretty close to the comics, except for one part. Um, Star, you know, Starman was really a composite of two characters: Starman and Star Spangled Kid, which they kind of put together. The fact that Courtney might be Star Girl's, uh, Starman's daughter, is also new to to um, to the character. Um, I'm trying to fix my damn hair. So, uh, what else? I liked the acting. There was a lot of uh, character, you know, like uh, well-known character actors. Uh, Joel McHale playing Starman, I thought was a weird pick. Uh, I really did like seeing some of the characters that haven't really been adapted too much uh, get their their own their own time, sort of say, uh, sort of speak. Star Girl really is a bridge between older characters and newer characters and legacy characters because that's what she is. She's a legacy character. She took the mantle from Starman or Star Spangled Kid and she made it her own. And that's really what I'm hoping we're going to see. And we already kind of saw that with she goes to high school with some of the kids, uh, you know, the, the kids of the bad guys who were in the beginning. That beginning sequence, I think alone, was probably better than any of the other CW shows. Um, what else? So we got to see Stripe. Stripe is the mechanical robot at the end who's uh, played by, who, who her father-in-law father is in the suit. I thought it was a little uh, ho a little off. The CGI is a little off, but in my opinion, most CGI is off. A little off. I really did enjoy it, though. 
It was funny. It was a lot funnier than the CW shows uh, typically try to be. Uh, the action was pretty good. Uh, I do like the story of a, uh, you know, a teenage girl in a world, a new world that she didn't ask for and didn't want. She's a very out of place. And then, of course, a lot of the resentment is towards her uh, stepfather, who then she starts to bond with because she realizes that he had this other life a long time ago. Now he has possession of the star of the cosmic rod that amazingly only works with her. I, I really didn't like her potentially being related to Starman. But other than that, I was really fine with it. I, it was a lot of fun. And um, I'll be honest, it really invoked a lot of feelings that the other CW shows almost have never done. Uh, but, you know, going back to Ruby Rose, that's another thing is, I know the Batwoman got renewed, but I wonder how this is going to affect the ratings. And I didn't know if I was going to watch season two about Batwoman, but now I just might because, uh, interesting, really interesting. But yeah, Stargirl was, uh, Stargirl was great. I'm de definitely can't wait for the next bunch of, I mean, there's a lot of history with that character. There's a lot of like mythos to work with. There's a lot of different other, uh, characters that you could build upon. So... Uh, for instance, there's a scene where she's in the cafeteria and she kind of gets in a little skirmish with uh, one of the bullies. And then a girl walks past her and tells her, that's my boyfriend, bitch. She is actually Stargirl's main villain. So it would be fun to see if they're going to build on that or was that just a reference? Um... Uh, Still, so far so great. So far so good. We'll see if it keeps going. Yeah, that was my uh, thoughts on the Star Girl, and uh, also it was written by Jeff. Jo the, I think the episode was written by Jeff Johns, but Jeff Johns is also the creator of Star Girl, and Star Girl really is again a bridge to Justice Society of America or JSA, and JSA should have been having their. They're, they're just due. They're, I mean, they should have gotten their own show, their own cartoon, what little movie, whatever. And this, finally, they're going to get the attention that they deserve. But unfortunately, it's just a little bit of a, an attention. But that's fine. I mean, maybe, um, maybe they could just build on that. We'll see. But yeah, I really did enjoy it. Probably one of the better premieres when it comes to the CWDC show. But again, this was originally intended for the DC app. And I really believe that that made the difference. They already had the show. You know, they, they kind of knew that the, the DC app was on its way out. It's not dead, but it's close to flatlining. So then CW, you know, they already have a, a rapport with the other shows that they have. So they were just like, okay, we'll, we'll put it on our channel. But I think because of that, they didn't interfere as much as they might have if it was an original production. So hopefully they won't... Yeah, I don't know how many episodes there are going to be. If there's only going to be like 10 then we should be okay. But if there's going to be more than 10, then CBW might get their hands dirty later on in the season. But hopefully they don't. Even if we get a perfect season one, and then the rest of it's just ruined by CW, fine. But so far, so good. Fingers crossed. Barely any fingers. Fingers crossed. And uh, crazy about Batwoman. I'm really interested to see what they're going to do with the show and who they're going to cast. All right, well, this is a short video, my reaction. Uh, I've uh, been a fanboy, and this has been my opinion, quick opinion.